So in our previous video, we started a discussion of what is critical media studies, but I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about that word critical or criticism more specifically and <clears throat> kind of define what it means within the realm of critical media studies. It may be a little different than what you think. So when we think about criticism, a lot of times we think of when we define criticism, we think of the expression of disapproval of someone or something based on perceived faults or mistakes. You think of that, that, um, that strict teacher that you had in school who was always correcting you about your English and, you know, back in the old, old days, wrapping you on the knuckles with a ruler or whatever, that kind of criticism where somebody's kind of knocking us down a little bit and telling us everything that we're doing wrong. That is not what we're doing in critical media studies. That's not the way we're using the word criticism or critical in critical media studies. In critical media studies, when we say criticism, what we mean is the analysis and judgment of the merits and faults of a literary or artistic work. And so think about it like you're, you're at a museum and you're looking at a fine piece of art or maybe a not so fine piece of art. It's really in your eye. You're, and you're analyzing it. You're examining that, that work of art. You're examining that painting and thinking about it and thinking about, it. and you're making judgments on the merits and the faults. They did this. Well, this could have been better. I, it speaks to me in this way, but not in another way and, or those types of things. And we're doing that with any literary or artistic work that could be that could be um, a, a painting, but it could also be analyzing a a um, uh, a book, a movie, a TV show, a, a, a painting, a, anything at all that we can consider a literary or artistic work. We're examining that through a particular framework, which brings us to the next part. Where, so we're not telling them what all they did wrong necessarily. We're just examining and uh, analyzing and 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 providing judgment on the merits or faults of this, of this artifact, what we're going to call an artifact, any literary or artistic work that can be examined, we're going to call an artifact. And when we do that, we're doing so in, in critical media studies, we're, we're specifically doing so through um, the, uh, a, a particular critical lens. That's going to be an important expression for us as well. A critical lens. And my wife is a photographer. I'm not a photographer, but my wife is a photographer. She's got all these different lenses for things. And I have no idea what they do. She'll say, I'm, I need to get this line. I need to change my lens. I need to do this. And, but they all do something different and they all provide different pictures. And she's amazing. She's won awards for photography. And, and uh, so, I mean, they all do something different. I don't know what they are, but that's what we're doing. We're swapping out these lenses so we can get a different perspective. For someone like me, I'm colorblind. So now they have these colorblind glasses, which are pretty amazing, right? Supposedly they totally change your perspective of the world. You see things, you see the colors now and things, but we put it, uh, we put on these different glasses and we see things differently uh, or in the more modern context, I guess we can think of it like on Instagram, you have different filters, right? That you can use to kind of change the shade of things. And we're not going to change the shade of things, but we're going to examine things through different perspectives. And we're going to ask questions about these things. We're going to try and identify, you know, what it is, these things, uh, mean what are they what are they getting at by asking critical questions from a particular framework or perspective okay so we may examine artifacts for example through the use of of marxist criticism or, or the frankfurt school right what's called so through an economic lens of of capitalism versus marxism things like that um, or through psychoanalytic criticism where we're looking at you know kind of the psychoanalysis of the creator and of the viewer and so forth, or through feminist and gender studies to examine how those things might impact the way somebody perceives something or, or ethnic and race studies. Again, just providing us a different perspective. We're looking at it and applying the specific framework to these things to ask questions. We could do, we could use the same artifact and look at it using all of those critical lenses and come to totally different conclusions because we're looking at it in totally different ways, right? It's important to remember that in critical media studies, there is no such thing as perfection. We're never going to find perfection. We're never, and that's not what we're looking for. We're not trying to define perfection or find it. We're not going to find it. There's no sense of finality either. These things exist within a historical context. What's true from a perspective today may not be true next week or next year or so forth. Right. Um, but so there's no real sense of finality to these things. These are ongoing examinations when we look through these critical lenses, um, but it's important that we do so. And it's important that we change our perspectives and look at it in different ways, right? As Kenneth Burke said, a way of seeing is also a way of not seeing. So when we see something through a particular lens, that means we're not viewing it through another lens. So we ought to be able to 
kind of take off one set of glasses, so to speak. If we have a, the critical lens glasses of Marxist criticism, when we put on the, the, our other glasses that have, you know, feminist and gender studies, we're going to see that artifact in a whole new light. And that's the whole idea that we'd be able to uh, examine it in these different ways, not necessarily even agree with it, agree with that perspective or, or endorse that perspective, but be able to see it from that perspective. Okay. That's critical media studies. So what are the different components then that we're going to need in terms of being effective in critical media studies? Well, um, first of all, we have to come in quite frankly with a skeptical attitude. We have to see beyond what's obvious, what's what's beyond the surface level of things and be able to dig a little deeper into this artifact and not just take things at face value, but look at examining as we're going to talk about some of these questions. Who is this person? What's their perspective in this? What's my what baggage? Am I bringing what perspective am I bringing? How does this fit into this framework? We have to see beyond the obvious and be coming with a skeptical attitude and be willing to uh, view things with a new perspective and in a new light. We also have to be uh, to, or to take on a humanistic approach, which is grounded in self-reflection. This, this idea of critical citizenship is inherent within a humanistic approach. There are um, there are things in the world that are known, right? There are things that are known. There, 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 there are sciences, for example, you know, science, mathematics, all the STEM type things <clears throat> where they know things. These are objective things, right? That, that they put out these formulas and these are objective truths. And those things exist in some of those areas. But in critical media studies, everything is inherently subjective. We live in the gray. We don't have that objectivity. We don't have the luxury of that objectivity. In fact, we're, we're specifically seeking out the opposite of that. We're, we're living in the gray. Everything is inherently subjective and depends on your perspective and depends on that individual's um, perceptions. Nothing is ever fully complete or finished. Again, as we were talking about just a moment ago, this is an ongoing thing that as you grow, it's going to change as, as that artist grows, that could change their perspective on things. And certainly time will have an impact. You know, some things age better than others, TV shows and songs and things like that, that age better than those, but that's, and they were a product of that time. You have to view it in that context, but, but nothing is ever going to be complete or finished. We're going to examine it differently at a, a later time. So we have to have this humanistic approach. We can't be totally bound up with objectivity and think, well, I've got it right. And there's no other way to see it. And it's this way forever. No, no, no. We live in the gray. We live in the subjective in critical media studies. So we've got to get comfortable with that. We also have to bring a political assessment. We have to identify things with the political, you know, have an eye toward political assessment, whose interests are being served here. Uh, how do those interests create and define and sustain the, the existing power structure that we have. So we have to come in acknowledging the role of a political framework and political assessment and all of this and, and, and not just trying to set it aside because that's not really possible. Everything exists within this kind of political environment. So whose interests are being served and how do those interests create, define and sustain that power structure? Uh, so we're going to look at things from that perspective as well. And then finally we have to do so. And we, 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 engage in critical media studies because we have a commitment to social justice. The end goal of all of this is not to be harsh and not to tell people why things are bad or why things are wrong. Again, that's not our kind of criticism. That's not what we're going for. The end goal here is to, to better our social world, to improve our social world and to enhance and increase social justice in the world by bringing different perspectives and by acknowledging other perspectives. Again, not, necessarily endorsing or agreeing with them, but being able to see them and to understand them better, those perspectives better, right? So we have this commitment to social justice. That's really why that's the core of why we engage in critical media studies to begin with. So this is components. Let's dig a little bit into what, what are some of the questions that we may be asking? And, and this is going to change every, every, as we'll talk about every perspective, every critical framework and critical lens will have different questions that kind of go along with it are inherent to that. But, you know, some of the just broader questions, some of the more common questions that we see in critical media studies include things like who created this artifact? Who was it that, that made this? And not just, not just their name and not just, you know, whatever, but who are they? Who are they as a person? Where are they from? What are their beliefs? What are their values? What are they trying to, to, to indicate with this? What, what kind of baggage do they bring with them that went into creating this? So who is it that created this artifact? Why was it created? What's the purpose of this? What was their intention? What was the idea here? Not necessarily, 
what it did. We know that sometimes things are created and then they, they're used for something totally different. But what was the intention with which it was created? Why was it, why was it created? What's the theme? Is there a theme is, you know, and they're almost always, but then what's the theme here? What is this person trying to, to relay? What are they trying to communicate? What are they trying to accomplish with this? What are we supposed to learn from this? You know, what is it that we're supposed to, to take away? If, if we were to ask the artist or, or just from our perspective, what are we supposed to do with this? How is this supposed to impact our lives? So we can ask these questions and, and again, much more specific things that relate to those different frameworks. They're going to carry with them different questions. And we're going to discuss each of those questions as we discuss the individual frameworks. But, but these are just, you know, to give you an idea, there's some broad common questions that come up in critical media studies. A couple of things to keep in mind as you start your journey into critical media studies, a couple of things that are important. Um, first of all, we have to separate the personal from the critical. We have to separate as much as possible, separate the personal from the critical, put up a barrier there and be able to separate you know, this is what I believe. Again, some of these perspectives are going to be contrary to what you believe. You know, if, if, if you, you know, you may think, well, I don't subscribe to that particular value system or that particular, um, lifestyle choice or that particular, whatever it is, that's okay. You don't have to, um, and we, but we got to be able to separate that from our, from our critical perspective, right? I'm not a Taylor Swift fan. I will never be a Taylor Swift fan. I just don't understand why people listen to her music. I, I just don't find her to be a good musician at all. But if I'm going to examine a Taylor Swift song, I've got to as much as possible set that aside. If I'm examining the artifact through one of these perspectives, I've got to kind of remove myself from the personal, remove my personal feelings about her as an artist and about the song and so forth and really examine it from as objective a way as possible. It's not possible to be completely objective. I understand that, but uh, you know, you got to separate the personal from the critical so that we can examine these things uh, more effectively. We also got to look for depth. You know, the, our instinct is just to say, okay, here's what I see. Here's the surface level. As we've talked about, it's more than that. We've got to go deep in these things. We've got to look for depth. We've got to get into these things deep. Who is this person? Again, not just what's their name, but where are they from? What is their, you know, what is their current status when, they, or what was their status when they made this? What was their perspective? What were they living through? What, when, what had they been through? What are they carrying with them into that? What was their goal? What were they hoping to accomplish? So all these things, we got to go deep into these things and really be willing to dig in and, and get into the, the, the deep waters with these things. And we've got to think on all axes, right? We've got to think on all, not axes, but axes. We've got to think on all perspectives, right? So if I show you this picture, for example, and I ask you, what do you see? You know, this is one of those, uh, those, those visual uh, trick type things. There's two actual, there's actually two images in here. Um, there's one of a, you may be seeing a younger woman kind of looking away into the distance, or you may be seeing what you would describe as an older woman in profile. You see the half of her face or whatever. Yeah, maybe you're seeing both. Maybe you're seeing neither. It doesn't matter, but this is one of those dual pictures. We've got to be able to see both pictures, not necessarily in this one, but we've got to be able to see things from lots of different perspectives. We've got to be able to take a step back and really look at things from a new perspective. So we've got to think on all axes. Hopefully this has given you a better idea of what we mean by criticism. Criticism is not just a way of tearing things down and telling people what they did wrong. Criticism in this respect has to do with thinking critically about an artifact and really digging in and discovering what the intention was and what it means to me, what it might mean to others, how it's interpreted more broadly, all of those different things. So it's not about knocking something down. It's about really understanding it. And as we go through these things, understanding it from a particular perspective and laying that framework over top of the artifact um, to, to understand it from that specific perspective. If you have questions about critical media studies or about anything else related to this, please feel free to email me and I'll be happy to answer what I can. In the meantime, I hope that you'll continue on with this, with this series as we examine more specific um, different types of critical lenses. And we put on those different critical lenses and try them out and see if we can examine an artifact from different perspectives as we engage in more and more detailed and more specific and more functional critical media studies.